Mark Short is the White House Director of Legislative Affairs. Mark, thanks for being here. Brad, thanks for having me on. All right, so is this happening or not? Tax it's reform. happening, yes. We've, uh, we've promised that we would get this done before Christmas so that American families can enjoy that as a Christmas present, that they'll have their taxes reduced next year, and we're still on schedule to get it done. All right, this is what we received up on Capitol Hill from the, the committee, the negotiators. Uh, it's not done until it's done, but here it is. 37% top individual rate, corporate tax rate, 21% goes into effect 2018. 10,000 uh, state and local tax deductions split between property taxes, income sales tax. Repeals the corporate AMT as in the Senate bill. Graduate school stipends preserved and the, as in the Senate bill. Medical expense deductions, Senate bill. AMT exemption increased to 500,000 individual, 1 million for a couple. Deductions are uh, maintained in the Senate bill and private activity bonds, again, the Senate position. Is that as you see it, those details right. that you all understand? Well, Brett, I think that uh, Congress will be announcing their deal. It's for them to announce rather than me. It seems you have good sources, and I think that, uh, that that's a pretty exciting package. If so it, you're, not, you're, you're saying that this tracks with what you guys are seeing? It tracks with what we're seeing. I think it's a pretty exciting deal for the American people. It delivers significant middle-income tax relief, provides the largest corporate tax relief in American history, makes us more competitive, and brings jobs back home. Where are the concerns? Are there still any concerns up there? The Susan Collins, the Rand Pauls, uh, are there any? We feel like we're in very good shape with each of those members. We feel like we're in good shape with the Senate body. Uh, as you know, what we really did with both the House and the Senate bills that already passed is they took care of our priorities of simplifying the tax code, targeting middle-income families, and providing corporate tax relief to bring jobs home. Each bill did that. So the reconciliation process was really one to go through some more of the details, Brett. We think it ends up being a win-win. So when you hear Chuck Schumer saying, you should wait until Doug Jones is seated, Alabama just had this special election, what do you say? Well, I think that uh, the reality is American people need this tax relief now, so there's no need for us to wait. But, you know, we hope that when Doug Jones arrives here in Washington, D.C., he'll actually be partnering with us. If he's representing the people of Alabama, then he'll want to make sure they get this middle income tax relief, too, as opposed to partnering with Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren. Democrats point back to Harry Reid in the wake of Scott Brown's 2010 election in Massachusetts. The, the election there dealt with Obamacare. Reid said at the time, we're going to wait until the new senator arrives until we do anything more on health care as an example. I'm not sure the Democrats should be holding up the example of Obamacare as one that they really cherish as a process. I think they jam that through on a purely partisan basis, so I'm not so sure that that's the, the model to hold up. We think in this case we've gone through hearings. We've, there have been over 100 hearings the last couple of years on tax reform. We've had a deliberative process. The American people are ready for tax reform. American businesses are ready for tax reform. This president has helped to turn this economy around. We've had two quarters of over 3% GDP, lowest unemployment rate in 17 years, something's missed, lowest unemployment among Hispanics in history since they started keeping that data. This tax reform will help keep that boom going. All right, so uh, Democrats, Joe Manchin was on Neil Cavuto's show, say you, you could have done it. You could have reached out to them and made it permanent on the individual side. Uh, take a listen to what he said. I guess the establishment says this is what we've got to do and how we've got to do it. They're determined not to have one Democrat. I'm an easy pickup. Just give me a little bit. I said, do you have to drop all the way down to 20 percent? We said go to 25. Go to 25 and stay there three or five years. See if the, if the GDP takes off the way we all want it to. See if the debt starts going downward. And then if we see a good trend, then go to 20 or 21. Why give away the other 400, 500 billion dollars? He says you could have got him. You buy that? We, uh, we had meetings at the White House with Senate Democrats and House Democrats, with members of Democrats in the Problem Solvers Caucus, as well as other moderate blue dog Democrats in the House. We talked to Senator Manchin. In fact, when the president called in to a meeting Senator Manchin organized with Senate Democrats, it got a lot of press coverage. We reached out. We tried to win their support. The reality is that they did not want to have a, they did not want to work on a bipartisan deal. I wish we could have earned Joe Manchin's support. I'm a fan of his, but the reality is that they really didn't want to come aboard. Government shutdown. Is it a reality that this thing is going to get punted? The going word is that a continuing resolution will be put forward on Monday and that it'll go till the middle of January. Is that what you see? I think it's most likely there'll be another continuing resolution to get us into mid-January. I think from an administration perspective, we've submitted our budget back in early spring, late winter. Congress goes to an appropriations process that should be completed at the end of September. 
that's the way it's supposed to work. The reason we continue to have these continuing resolutions is because Congress doesn't get their job done. The president is anxious to get a spending bill so we can fund our military obligations, Brett. We have significant national security threats, and we need to make sure that our troops are getting the resources they need. So we're anxious to get a full spending bill. Are we here on Christmas Eve? I am certainly hopeful we're not here. I do think we'll probably have another short-term punt, as you suggest, with a CR that gets us into January. And hopefully at that point we have a full uh, spending bill that gets us through all of 2018, as well as a budget cap deal that provides the funding for 2019. Mark, we appreciate the time. Always welcome. Brett, thanks for having me.